Hello, welcome to Mend It and Hope. This is Sonia Collins. Um, I just wanted to talk today about that incomparable father, God. He's just truly amazing. And he loves you so very much. He delights in you. Um, I was um, reading Colossians chapter 1, and my eyes um, were very taken by verses 21st and 22nd. And it's just amazing how amazing God is and how loving he is. Have you ever encountered a situation in your life or in your journey of family members or acquaintances or people from work in which you think they don't like you or hate you. Maybe some of them may, <laughs> but there's some that you think they don't like you or that they're not for you. And then you later find out that they they were not against you, that they were for you and that they love you and that they appreciated you, that it was all in your mind. I don't know about you, but I have experienced that myself. I think it has to do with the rejection and uh, feeling like an orphan at times, uh, being double-minded. You know, there's some family patterns and there's some worldviews that we all can adopt or walk in that they become the filter or the lens in which we see things and how we process things and how we internalize things. Um, I am going to read a couple of verses from Colossians chapter 1, verses 21 and 22. If you can read it all, I strongly encourage you because it's amazing. Read it and you can make it your prayer. Um, but it talks about how amazing um, and incomparable the love of the Father and God is for us. In verse um in chapter 1, verse 21, he says, And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now have he reconciled you by Christ, Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation, free from accusation and without blemish. That's how God sees you and me when we have received Jesus as our Lord and Savior, because his body reconciles us back to the Father, to the Father's love. I'm going to read it on the Amplified Version. That was the King James, and this is the Amplified Version. Sometimes I like to read it to get a different perspective. It says, it's the same chapter 1 of Colossians, verses 21 and 22, and it says, And although you were at one time strange and alienated and hostile-minded toward him, participating in evil things, yet Christ has reconciled you to God in his physical body through death in order to present you and me, to present you before the Father, holy and blameless and beyond reproach. Wow. What this means is that even God already knows we're not perfect. He already knows that we cannot change ourselves, that we cannot transform ourselves. However, we can step into Jesus. We can step into what Jesus has done for us. And there's an, in a spiritual exchange in, in, in which you become one with God in spirit. And um, it's just amazing that we may feel ashamed because we may have failed him or we may feel that we're short and we're going to be short. Um, the Bible says that our very best <laughs> is like a dirty rag before God, meaning when you are thinking about self-righteousness because um, he's so holy and he's so perfect, but he doesn't measure us through our deeds. He measures us through his love, meaning 
uh, we have been redeemed and accepted and received by him when we have embraced what Jesus has done for us, which is him laying down his life for you and me. I am going to read some verses that will affirm and remind you that you are God, God happy thought, that God loves you and he delights in you. When he sees you, he does not see your shortcomings or the failures of the past or the mistakes or even the sin. All of those have been done away by the Lord Jesus Christ through his blood. So when he sees, he sees his beautiful creation. According to Genesis 1.26, we have been created according to his image. So God delights and he smiles when he thinks about you. God is a spirit and he's not limited by time and space. So if you scratch your head and he goes, well, there's like about seven and a half billion people on the earth right now. How can he possibly divide his attention? Who am I that he will just uh, know who I am? Well, his ways are not our ways, but um, he can be everywhere at the same time because he's not limited by time or space. And we as humans, we're limited by time or space, but he's not. And he adores you and he loves you. And so does everybody else wanting to reconcile every single living soul back onto himself because he is the God of reconciliation. Reconciliation is the restoration uh, of relations. Like if there was strife or a division or um, a disconnect is a restoration of that godly relationship. Um, the verses that I wanted to read, these are just some statements that it would be great if you can say them aloud. You can even look them up in your Bible and you can personalize it and make it your affirmation. Um, these are words spoken by God about you. Um, it says, Fa uh, Father loves me with an everlasting love. I have never not been by my father. Jeremiah 31, 3. Father loves me so much that he gave his only son to die for me so I might know his love. John chapter 3 and verse 16. Father loves me so much that he wants to express his love and affection to me. John chapter 16, verse 27. Nothing can separate me, not even my faults, from God's love for me. Romans 8, 39. Father loves me just as much as he loves his son, Jesus Christ, just because I love him. Jesus. John chapter 17, 23. Even when I have sinned, sin means disobedience, by the way. Even when I have sinned, the Father loves me and asks me to sit beside him with Christ. Ephesians 2, verses 4 through 6. Father wants me overflowing in his love. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19. I just wanted to encourage you to uh, ponder these verses and look them up, put them in an index card. This is how I renew my mind. I make little index cards and I just I just call them meditation cards and they're life changing. There's a reason that, that God um, in the scripture says, do not let my sayings depart from your eyes and from your ears. Meaning we read them and we say them because the word of God transforms and converts the soul. The soul is your mind, your emotions, and your will. You can say affirmations based on the new age or the universe. And yes, those are spiritual realities, but they are not connected to the spirit of life. The spirit of life is the Holy Spirit that only comes from God.
God the Father sent the Holy Spirit after Jesus went back to the Father, he ascended. Jesus said, it's better for me to go and I'm going to send to you a comforter, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth. And he will comfort you. He will lead you. He will guide you. He does stand by to help you. And he will remind you of what you have heard. Okay, so even at times, if you know a scripture and you don't quite remember it, I always ask the Holy Spirit, what was the scripture or where can I find that? And sometimes I just hear it in my spirit, what it was, and I go straight and sure enough. So uh, there's the last verse that I wanted to leave with you is Psalm chapter 18 and verse 19. It says, he, God the Father, God brought you to a place of saf safety. He rescued you because he delights in you. And that's what I want you to remember today, that God loves you. He's an amazing father. He's an un incomparable God. No other God. He's the only true God, but no other God or created being does what he has already done for you he loves you he adores you i just bless you with the peace of god and may god open your spiritual eyes so you could see the hope of his calling that he can open your ears so you can hear the voice of the true shepherd the one that comes through the front door in revelations chapter 3 he says that jesus comes and knocks he knocks at the door of your heart and he is knocking. He wants to dine with you. He wants to have fellowship with you. But remember, he's not a demon. He doesn't kick the door of your heart. He's knocking from the outside, wanting to come in. Would you open the door today? If you already walk with God, if he's already your Lord and, and Savior, that's awesome. But if you want to grow tighter, just Invite him again to just, just tell him I open both doors, double doors of my heart. And I invite you to come in and dine with me and, and me with you, Lord. And he is just awaiting. He desires to reconcile with you to the next level. There's always area for growth. I, I aspire every day to grow in him as I am one with him already. When you walk with God, you have given him permission through his Holy Spirit to dwell in your heart. And we all grow in relationship, just, just how we grow in relationship with others. And you spend time with them, uh, drinking coffee or in community or going shopping or just chatting about things. He desires to talk to you about everything that concerns you. He desires to bless you. And um, would you receive his love today? Would you receive his gift of forgiveness? I hope that you do. It is free and it is for you today. Well, bless you. Thank you for listening. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.